Hey everybody, Ron right here, and I love fun AFK builds in Path of Exile. Especially if you can be immortal in the process and literally face tank the whole game while still dealing damage. And you don't even need a single skill on your panel, so it's completely zero buttons. It just works. The build can do a lot of amazing stuff, such as killing Uber Uber Elder in complete AFK without moving from the center. Just check it out. In this sped up clip, I'm literally standing in place during the whole fight. Now, this is an enjoyable way to farm Ubers. It can also face tank Uber Shaper Slam, Katarina's Children's Spam, Uber Exact Balls, Abomination Red Spheres, and the build is not afraid of damage over time. It has crazy regeneration, recoup, leech, life on hit together with 100 suppress, endurance charges, and a huge hit pull together with crit immunity building and ultimate AFK tank. So if you received a phone call, here's a door ring, or remember that you forgot a cake in the oven, you can go completely AFK into your 17 maps, while still easily destroying all enemies on the screen. While playing, you can also watch TV, YouTube, or streams, and still come out on top against most of the content in the game. Sounds fun? Now I will explain what you will need to build it. Use the timestamps for particular questions as usual, and let's roll. Or walk? How the build works? Well. I'm going to explain it while staying AFK in another Uber Uber Elder fight. Generally, the build utilizes a few different mechanics to survive and deal damage. For tankiness, we are using the amazing combo of Blood Notch, Unfaltering Passive, Petrified Blood to negate all damage from stunning hits, with Immutable Force on top to make sure we can still cast just fine. We are also using a combo of Upper State and Energy Shield items to stack a pretty big health pool with Rathbit on top to provide the damage. Additionally, Defiance of Destiny amulet is just amazing for the build, since half of the pool is already missing because of the petrified blood and it can heal huge amounts because we already stuck health. As a separate mechanic, we can also use the Dark Seer Scepter together with Malediction for better survivability and Blood and Sand Aura in the sad mode to counter melee monsters. Since we are AFK and standing at one place while bossing, Bill can also utilize Nature Patience bonus from Natural Affinity Jewel to get both throwability and deal double damage. To deal damage in general, we are using Salorant of the Spiral as our main skill, which can shotgun enemies with the returning projectile support, and will be pretty much used every time when we are getting stunned. It stacks great with our passives, such as Wither debuffs, Double Cures, that, because this pair is pretty strong right now, and Pain Atonement leading to a very decent damage for a full AFK build. To trigger all of our skills, we are going to use cast when stun support to maintain nice trigger rate and use all of our abilities completely petty without any clicks necessary so we can just walk around while destroying enemies. So another great question is why I picked Occultist for that build. So generally I think Occultist right now is one of the best options for AFK builds. First off, we can completely negate all life regeneration for enemies, so we always will kill them this time. Because we have Void Beacon, and Void Beacon give us 100% reduced life regeneration rate for enemies nearby. We are also receiving an amazing way to just inflict Withered without even clicking anything. Withering Presence is working so good, because after 15 seconds we are going to inflict maximum wither on all enemies around, and we don't need to click a single button for it. We can also utilize Unholy Authority very good because it can give us additional cures and it's going to feel just amazing. And Profane Bloom helps with the clear because we already cured the enemies pretty consistently. So with all that kit we are using all passives from Occultist and I think it's making it very effective. So to maintain our cast rate, we need to be sure that every hit is pretty much stunning our character. To achieve that, we are going to use Valerium Moonstone Ring. It will give us stun threshold is based on energy shield instead of life. And most of our energy shield will be moved to health anyway, because we are using upper state and we are receiving maximum life instead of maximum energy shield from equipped armor. However, if you are already using Valerium, it will be very important to make sure that we have zero energy shell, because we are still receiving a little here and there, from Valerium itself for example. So to achieve that, we are going to use a ring, which has minus to maximum energy shell, because that's 
just a decent base like that. Most of those bases are mirror, and we can get minus at least 60 to energy shield and ensure that our energy shield is going to be at zero. So if you can get a very good ring like that with a lot of health, that's all right. Just make sure that you have minus energy shield there because it's going to help you significantly with your cast rate on stun. So another important part that I wanted to mention is that in that build, we can't use dissolution of the flash completely. So if you can just check dissolution in path of building, it will give you about 40% of hit DPS, 95% of maximum hit, and about 5 of the something thousand of life. So that's a big number. However, those snipers are completely not working for the build. Since we are on AFK build, we will be unable to disengage to pretty much recover our life. That will be reserved when we are getting hit by dissolution. So if we are going to use that jewel, we are going to be killed in many many scenarios because of hits just overwhelming the character. So even if those snipers could look great, it's a total bait and we can't completely use it in the most cases. So try to avoid using the jewel even if Path of Buildings recommended it to you. So one of the most common mistakes and the reason why some people are dying when they are trying to build builds like that is pretty much recoup amounts. So to avoid dying and to pretty much make sure that you are trying to get your life back, you pretty much need to combine a very good blood notch, which should be around 50% at least, together with a passive that we are using, called unflattering. If you're not using unflattering, you will need a 60% blood notch. If you're using unflattering, you can pretty much keep using uh, 50 or like 52 or 59% blood notch. So after that, you will also need to reach about 30% of recoup. That's very important because that way you're going to receive very close to zero damage from stunning hits. And to reach that recoup, we pretty much will need to use a different corrupted jewels. So since corrupted jewel together with Adorn can give us 6% of damage taken recouped as life, it will be raised exactly to 11. So I recommend to you three jewels like that. So 6% three times uh, each, and after the buff from Adorn is going to reach us to 32-33% based on the situation. It's a very great way how you can reach recoup without investing too much just with adorned and the jewels and you need to make sure that you always have 30 percent here so another great question is why we don't use a blood magic so generally blood magic is a pretty amazing note however we get a lot of survivability from our auras specifically from arctic armor which helps significantly against physical damage because we don't have other means to protect us against it and also we can utilize the rest too, we need petrified blood up in the most situations too, because it stacks with the rest of our kit. So if we are going to use both of those auras, we will need to reserve at least half of our health, and generally it will be alright. However, since we are using Defiance of Destiny amulet, we need as much unreserved life as possible, because we are going to regenerate that unreserved life consistently with Defiance of Destiny bonus. That way, if you are picking Blood Magic, half of our life will be reserved and will not be recovered with Defiance of Destiny bonus. And it's going to tank our survivability. So unfortunately, since we need both Auras and Unreserved life, we just can't feed Blood Magic into the build. So another great question is, can we run different modifiers and can we run all tier 17 modes? And generally, the answer is yes. The biggest issue is probably no recovery, and as you can see on the screen right now, uh, Iran cannot regenerate map, and, well, I'm feeling kind of alright inside. Even if the monsters have rare and unique monsters, remove 8% of life mana and energy shield from players on the, or their minions on hit. So even two modifiers like that together cannot regenerate and remove percent of life, it's pretty much working just fine. I also have minus 10% to all maximum resistance on that map, and as you can see, it's not really changing a lot. However, combination of modifiers can still theoretically break our map. And 
It can happen if we will roll a lot of bad modifiers such as cannot regenerate together with some chaos damage and together with like remove percent of life or maybe add XP on top and minus 40% of resistances. However, while I've been running maps, such combination never happened and I think it's not really happening that often to pretty much worry about that. And genuinely, you can just relax and start out almost all the maps. I still would be careful with minus to all maximum resistances because of a bad modifier at, and with cannot regeneration. I've been also running two scarabs of risks in the most of filming while I've been preparing that build and it's been alright too. So talking about our stats, we definitely have an issue with dexterity and intelligence. To fix intelligence, we're pretty much going for deep wisdom and it should help a lot. And to fix dexterity, we're pretty much using the three carry here. However, there is one situation that we need to keep in mind. Sniper mark with such dexterity should be not level 20, but level 19 or even 18 if you have a little less dexterity on your items. So lowering sniper mark would help you significantly with dexterity. And you just need intelligence for the helmet, which requires about 224 intelligence. Everything else is not really requires a lot, so if you would pick a different helmet, the requirement for intelligence could be a little lower. However, generally, we should be in a normal situation, and you should have enough for a sniper of mark of level 19. And talking about max resistances, we are pretty much receiving most of our max resistances from the flasks. So we are using Sapphire, Ruby and Topaz flasks. However, it's very important to use at least one jewel for each type of resistance to get additional maximum that way too. So Crimson jewel here for maximum fire, Kraken here for maximum cold and Leviathan here for just like maximum lightning resistance. Talking about our suppress, to reach enough suppress, we pretty much need to go to inventory and we need to use a lot of tattoos working out our dexterity. However, since we still need dexterity, important moment is to roll at least plus 7% chance to suppress spell damage on the gloves, because it's going to help to cap spell suppression without adding even more tattoos. Talking about crit immunities and the rest, so here we have a very important stun mastery. Hits against you cannot be critical strikes if you've been stunned recently. It's going to help us significantly against crits and random big hits. So taking it is absolutely mandatory. We can also roll Valerium Moonstone Corruption for cannot be poisoned or cannot be ignited. Both of them are working just fine, so you can pick the one that you prefer. Talking about shock immunity. We are getting shock immunity just from the flask, since we are using mage blood here, and we can roll immunity to shock during effect, and it's working just fine. We are also getting immunity to cures us here, because it's very important to negate debuffs from tier 17. And we also have additional bonus, such as bleed timer, because we can roll on the jewels like reduce bleed duration on you. Since we already have a Corrupted Blood immunity, mostly from Corrupted Blood Nudge or from Corrupted Natural Affinity here, as you can see, Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you. That one is not really that expensive. So, for that, just to negate bleed, a bleed, we can pretty much use implicit, like, reduce bleed duration, and if you roll enough of them, we can reduce bleed duration up to, like, 90 or even 100%. Talking about our Pantheon. We are pretty much running Soul of Lunaris and Soul of Tukahama together. Tukahama is here to provide us uh, with additional regeneration and with additional physical damage reduction. Because physical is probably the most important part for us to survive better. And Lunaris is here just to get reduced elemental damage taken if you have been hit recently. And also additional physical damage for each nearby enemy again, which stacks very good. This is what we already have. So talking about the budget for the build, genuinely I tried to avoid most of the expensive items and tried not to go to a mirror tier here. That way I think you need at least 
500 divine super damage gets built, mostly because of the voices and the mage blood. However, the rest is not really that expensive, so defiance of destiny is pretty basic. I avoided going for corrupted version because it would cost a mirror. I also picked only one corruption at value because double corruption could cost about 300 divines. And it goes the same for rough piece, so it's only single corruption, even at the good shield it should cost about 20 divines. And it goes for the rest of items too, so I picked the helmet with less energy shield than we can get for a perfect approach and most of those bases are nothing special or nothing too crazy so no perfect quality bases no too expensive setup so gloves as you can see only 20 quality at all and helmet is only 24. so generally i think the build should be possible around 500 divines at least at the moment when i'm filming the video however prices could change especially in the next leagues so be very careful about the budget and check how it should work. The most important items always will be like Blood Nudge, Voices, Watcher's Eye, Mutable Force, and the Mage Blood. The rest is pretty much coming in, because Valyrium is always very cheap, and the Fights of Destiny you can get any with just 24% of missing and reserved life before being hit by an enemy. So another interesting question is how to walk faster, because Sometimes you just want to be a little faster overall. So if you want to run faster, you pretty much will need to repick one modifier at the boots for movement speed. So maximum energy shield, increase energy shield percentage, or maximum life will need to go, and you will need to pick movement speed here. So 30%, like 35% of movement speed, could help you a lot just to run faster through the maps. But generally, since it's mostly like an AFK build, I never bothered and I pretty much just focused on being as tanky as possible. So giving a little item overview based on what I can currently showcase and during another Uber Elder fight. So generally, and yes, level 85 as you can see, so generally at the helmet you just need dexterity, intelligence, mana reservation, efficiency and some chaos resistance. You also will need to roll impulses for plus 2 maximum lightning resistance, it's very important. And for the rough piece, you just need a basic version with life and as much energy shield as possible because shield is considered armor. Mage blood, you just need a lot of dexterity here, nothing else because everything else is not really affecting the build by itself. So Add the gloves, you need an implicit again, and don't forget to get suppressed spell damage because that's how we are capping it. If you can get a little chaos resistance together with intelligence, that would be very good. Uh, that's pretty specific set for gloves, and you can craft it yourself without any issue as well. So for the boots, we need an implicit again with plus two maximum fire resistance. Uh, dexterity, intelligence, one any resistance, and chaos. So it could be lightning, it could be cold, but most of them are pretty much working. At the ring, you just need to have minus to maximum energy shell, and that's pretty much it. If you can get global critical strike multiplier or life there, it will be just perfect. For dark seer, you just need a corruption and make sure that it gives you maximum mana instead of maximum energy shell, because energy shield could be very, very bad. At the upper state, you can go for corruption like socket AoE gems or socket projectile gems. Both of those options are working. And for Defiance of Destiny, just make sure that you have a maximum missing energy of life possible, and you will also click it with quality for life and mana modifiers. Talking about the tree, and yeah, we're still staying in the fight. Here you just need to take Pain Atonement to the left together with some light bonuses. You also need to go to the right, taking Blood Siphon, some jewel sockets here, and don't forget that you need to take all life mastery passives. And after that, just spam voices here, voices here, and voices here. They're also taking endurance charges. And don't forget to take inexorable because it's going to provide you endurance charges while you are fighting. There's a very good chance for it. So both endurance charges here are working. And we are also going to use natural patience. For the jewels, don't forget that you will generally need to have three jewels with damage taken recouped as life. Exactly three. 
We also will need a stun master here, and we also will need unflattering, because that way we are going to regenerate more life from stunning hits. That's pretty much it, and the rest is very, very basic. There's not a lot of changes. Don't forget to take Inviterate. Um, at level 100, you need to take Prevent up 3% of Suppressed Spell Damage, and use as many Suppressed Spell Tattoos as you want. So, eat pretty much it, and for the Ascendancy, you're just going Void Beacon, Bithering Presence, Propane Bloom, and Unholy Authority. So that's pretty much it, and the setup is pretty simple. And we are still in the fight. So that's been my Immortal AFK build, which I really enjoyed that league. I think it could be very fun end of the league project or like middle of the league project, depends on your budget. It can farm Uber Uber Elder in total AFK, it can run tier 17 map, it can also do like simulac rooms and stuff like that as well without any issue. It's been very nice to play the build and I hope you will be able to enjoy it too. Thank you very much for watching guys, as usual, feel free to subscribe for more RPG content and see you next time. Ron Ray out.